Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome to another edition of That's Railroad. Uh, but uh, let's change that. Today is the, that's coal mining, and we're going to talk some more about uh, what's happening here with uh, the future of coal, and uh, it's actually more about what's happening here with the power plants, the coal-fired power plants in the United States. So I hope you a uh, short little video, at least short for me. Uh, going to tell you some things I don't think you know, and uh, it doesn't look good. I'm, uh, I'm very concerned about the future of the coal industry for power generation for this country, and uh, I'm going to show you the reasons why here, talk to you a little bit. I've talked to you a little bit before in another video on the future of coal. Uh, whether this is all going to happen, I don't know. But um, just giving you some information today to uh, a little bit wide, broader perspective of the whole thing. You know, uh, our mine here, even if the, we're told that even if the domestic market dries up, that they can sell every bit of coal that we can mine overseas. So that's, that's good to know. Uh, we've been mining coal really, really well here. Really good here lately. Uh, so, okay. I'm here at our ballast pile. I got ballast being delivered today. I'm waiting for our trucks. All right. We'll get right into the video. And I hope you enjoy today's uh, show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Okay, this article comes out of Coal Age of June 2023 issue of Coal Age magazine. And uh, the future of coal is vitally important uh, to the health of our railroad. Without coal to move, we don't have a railroad. So this is very interesting. So I do bring you information on coal every now and then in videos. Uh, try to get this focused here. This is the Ratcliffe Onsore Power Plant in uh, Nottingham, United Kingdom. And this article says, A heat wave that caused uh, three or old guards to collapse in London during early June has now forced the United Kingdom's national grid to restart the Ratcliffe Onsore coal-fired power plant in Nottinghamshire to meet demand for air conditioning. The move ends a 46-day run where coal was not used to generate electricity. Uh, ironically, the Western Standard reported, and I assume that's a newspaper, uh, the biggest culprit is unreliable solar panels, saying extreme heat hinders the panel's capacity to collect energy. How about that? Never heard that before, did you? How about that? The coal-fired power plant had been scheduled to close in March 2023, but the closure was postponed for two years after Russia invaded Ukraine and disrupted natural gas markets. Now, an editorial in The Telegraph, and I assume that's another uh, newspaper, uh, blamed the situation on the nation's rush to embrace renewable energy. Do we have the same thing happening here in the United States? Uh, yeah, we'll get into that here in just a minute. Okay. Which now account for 40% of the United Kingdom's electric supply, calling it Britain's green energy disaster and warning Americans not to make the same mistake. So how about that? We'll be right back with some more information. Well, here's another uh, article. I've read to you from Connor Bernstein before. This is in Cold Age Magazine also. And uh, it's talking about the New York Times. Almost figured it out in why the U.S. electric grid isn't ready for the energy transition. Uh, says the Times is silent 
on the most inconvenient truth, despite acknowledging that the grid isn't ready for the energy transition, and widespread recognition that replacement capacity has not yet been built, and we talked about this before in the previous video on the future of coal. Uh, if you want to watch that, there's a link in the video description to watch that, the future of the coal industry. All right, the Biden administration is aggressively working to accelerate existing plant retirements. Uh, it doesn't take a great expert to know what happens when an electricity system that is already teetering on the edge loses significant sources of power generation without the requisite replacement capacity to fill the gap. Uh, Getting to the Biden administration's goal of a largely renewable emissions-free grid by 2035 would require more than doubling national transmission capacity. And uh, we talked about that in that last video also. Now, uh, what's pushing this? Is the... Paris Accord of 2015. And uh, what is happening here, uh, we got back into it with the current administration, the Paris Accord. By the way, I'm waiting for, I got dump trucks coming in delivering ballast today. So I'm waiting for this guy to get out of the way so I can shove that pile he just dumped up, off, up. And then we got another truck coming. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's what's happening here is the current administration's EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, is going Hades bent on shutting down these coal-fired power plants despite the incapacity that we have for the new uh, re energy sources to replace it. They don't care. They, they don't care whether we have these energy sources to replace it. They just want to get, uh, their, their objective is to get us into this, um, where we want to be with the Paris Accord. So, uh, by 2035. So they're, they're doing their best to shut down coal-fired power plants. Let me read this also to you. Uh, here, the, according to the Federal Regulatory Commission, uh, I told you before about the transmission lines not being built and in fact are slowing down, but one of the commissioners, Mark Christie, said, and this is, this is just doggone common sense, you know, I think we need to listen to the engineers, not the lobbyists. How about that? All the experts are saying, all the experts who know how to operate a system, the people who actually know how to operate a system are saying, this is a huge and coming problem. And I think we better be listening to them. And that's the rub. The people who have control of the nation's energy policy, who are dictating the speed of the transition, and the speed at which critical important resources are being pushed off the grids aren't listening. Duh. There you have it. Okay. We'll be back with more. Okay, we got around 200 ton in today. We had an order for 400 ton. They brought a couple hundred ton there the day before. So we're in pretty good shape here for a little while. But I did want to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching today's video. Uh, I will be most interested. To, uh, read the comments we've got a lot of very intelligent and uh, a lot of very good people aren't here that watch these videos that have a lot of common sense and uh, 
you know, common sense is going to solve our problems. All right. Again, thank you very much for watching. You guys keep it on the rail. Keep pulling grade. Until we meet again. That's about 23 ton he's got on there. It's number three limestone ballast. All right. I got to get off of here and get the uh, scale ticket off of this guy. Okay. Oh, and we got a train. How about that? More coal for power generation. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. How fortuitous was that? With a dump truck and a train full of coal at the same time. All right, pretty far out. I'll be right with you, buddy.